What is up everybody? Thank you for stopping by Steady Chaos Productions. And so today I wanted to talk about my LG C10 picture settings as well as my NVIDIA control panel picture settings now that I have an HDMI 2.1 source in the form of an RTX 3080. Let's talk about it, shall we? So the very first thing we can look at is the NVIDIA control panel. So you just right click on your desktop, bring up the NVIDIA control panel. Now, like I said, I have the RTX 3080. And so the first thing we're gonna wanna look at is your resolution section. So I have 3840 by 2160. And because we're on HDMI 2.1 now, which is 48 gigabits of bandwidth, as opposed to HDMI 2.0, which was only 18 gigabits of bandwidth, we don't have to make any compromises on these picture settings, basically. So our refresh rate is now 120 hertz, which is 4K 120 native is a beautiful, beautiful thing. You could do that on HDMI 2.0 on your PC prior, but you had to make certain uh, sacrifices when it came to pixel color information, when it came to your dynamic range. So as we'll see right now, you no longer have to make those sacrifices. So when you come down here to number three, apply the following settings, use the NVIDIA color settings. So your desktop color depth is 32 bit. But now, because we have that extra bandwidth of HDMI 2.1, you can set your output color depth to 10 bit color, which is what you want. And then you can set your output color format, which is basically the color information your television receives on a per pixel basis. You can set that to RGB or 444, which is full color information, which is a glorious thing to have at 4K 120. And your output dynamic range, you can also set that to full, assuming you have a television that is capable of receiving a full dynamic range input. So one way you can tell if your TV is capable of receiving this full dynamic range is if it allows you to adjust your black level, that's typically what it's called. So for instance, in the LG C10, if you bring up the picture settings, and you go down to picture options, you'll see here it's called black level. And some TVs name it slightly different things. It's not always called, you know, dynamic range. But if your TV allows you to change this dynamic range or allows you to change the black level, then you can assume that it is capable of receiving both a low, obviously, and a full dynamic range input. So because we know that the LG C10 can receive that full output dynamic range, we wanna set it to full. So you can see down below, the output dynamic range allows the user to select dynamic range 16 to 235 or zero to 255 for 8-bit color of the output, which can preserve shadow and highlight details in the imagery being viewed. So basically, if you were running an HDMI 2.0 source back in the day, and you may still be running it now. If you were gonna run 4K resolution with HDR, then you had to limit it to 60 frames per second. You had to limit your output color format to either 422 or 420 to preserve bandwidth. And you had to limit your output dynamic range to limited, which is just 16 to 235. So that is not the full range of shadow and color detail that you want. So because now we don't have to make those compromises on HDMI 2.1, we can run 4K, 120, 10-bit color, full color information, RGB or 444 with that full dynamic range in SDR, which is, is the picture quality is just absolutely amazing. It looks great. Now, one other thing to take note of is because you're now using that full dynamic range, you wanna come down to adjust video color settings. You wanna click on with the NVIDIA settings and you come to this tab right here where it says advanced and you wanna make sure your dynamic range is consistent with what you just set it at, okay? So you wanna make sure it's now at full, which is again, zero to 255. So if your source is listed at full, then you want your TV to be listed at full. You don't wanna mismatch them because if you do, then you have, for instance, your source could be full at zero to 255. And if you set your TV to limited at 16 to 235, they're mismatched. And so you could end up getting black crush you could end up washing out your image. Things just won't look quite right. So make sure across all of your various settings that your dynamic range is consistent in both your source settings and also on your TV settings. So that's pretty much it for the NVIDIA control panel uh, PC setting side. Now, one thing I will say is set up G-Sync. If you have an NVIDIA GeForce card, RTX 3000 series, it is capable of G-Sync. So at the very least, you're, I assume you're gonna be doing some gaming. 
So you want to make sure that you enable G-Sync because the LG C10 is G-Sync compatible. So at the very least, click enable for full screen mode, and that's what I have it set at. When I'm just browsing the web or I'm, I'm in Windows 10 and I have a bunch of various windows open, I don't engage G-Sync then because there's really little benefit of using G-Sync for navigating Windows 10, you're not gonna be dropping frames. So I only enable it for full screen mode, which is basically just for full screen gaming. So that's gonna do it for the NVIDIA control panel picture settings, but what about the TV itself? So let's jump right into that. Now, a lot of these settings haven't changed for the TV itself from HDMI 2.0 to HDMI 2.1, but we'll jump into it real quick. So you go down to general and you go down to AI service. I have all of these things off, AI picture pro, AI brightness control. I don't want the TV to manipulate or adjust any brightness settings on my behalf. I set the TV the way I think it should look and I want it to stay that way. And also with AI Picture Pro, you're adding uh, additional CPU processing to the image. So when you do that, you could add a little bit of additional input lag or latency to your gaming experience. So I just make sure that those are off. Then you come up to picture. So for my PC settings, I have it in game mode right now. I have the aspect ratio at 16 by nine. Energy saving is off. You don't want to turn energy saving on because if you do, you can predict what's going to happen. The screen is going to get horribly dim. You're not going to be able to see anything. So leave it on off to get that bright, bright, clear image. Additional settings, HDMI Ultra HD Deep Color. You want to make sure that is set to on because that will allow you to unlock the full bandwidth potential of your HDMI in port that you're using your PC with. So even though I use my PC in SDR mode for Windows 10, 99% of the time, whenever I play a video game, I set it to HDR because I want that game to be displayed in HDR. I want the wide color gamut. I want the dynamic range and the brightness. So by leaving HDMI Ultra HD deep color on, you'll ensure that your LG C10 properly renders that HDR content, that it looks right, that it can properly display that wide color gamut. So make sure you leave it on. Instant game response, you can set that to on for a low latency. AMD FreeSync Premium, unless you're using a big Navi AMD GPU, you can just leave this off. Uh, FreeSync pertains to AMD GPU cards. I have the NVIDIA RTX 3080, so I'm using G-Sync as we saw earlier. Filmmaker mode, auto change, set that to off. You do not want the PC to go into filmmaker mode when you're playing a video game on your PC or when you're browsing the internet because you're gonna have extra latency. So now we go back to the picture mode settings. Again, I'm in game user. So OLED light and contrast. I have 45 OLED light, 65 contrast. I find that this is a good compromise between daytime viewing with a lot of ambient light, as well as nighttime viewing where you have a completely pitch black environment. So you want a happy medium. You don't want it to be so bright at night that you're searing your eyeballs out and you want it to be just bright enough during the day that you can see comfortably. And I think that's where I'm at right here. Again, this is probably subjective based on your ambient setup, so feel free to adjust. But I also find that keeping the OLED light under 50 will help, probably, most likely, in staving off burn-in and kind of mitigating image retention. So it's good to keep that OLED light kind of low with SDR content. In HDR content, that's different. You want your OLED light in contrast technically to be 100, both. So you're getting that full dynamic range. But again, we're just talking about SDR mode here. We're just talking about browsing the web using Windows 10, etc. So keeping your OLED light at 45 is a good spot, I think, to mitigate burn-in, image retention, and also to maintain enough brightness during the day that you can see clearly, and also not so bright at night that you sear out your eyeballs. The same with the 65 contrast. Brightness at 50, that is the default setting for game mode. Just leave that as it is. Sharpness at 10. That is also the default setting for game mode. That's completely fine. Uh, I'm not one of those people that likes to have sharpness all the way to zero typically because I like a little bit of edge enhancement in my picture. So generally I'm between 10 and 15. But if you're a purist and you're running in 4K and you don't want any added edge enhancement or TV processing to sharpen the image, then by all means set it to zero. Color, the default setting is 55. I like a little bit of additional color, especially when I'm watching YouTube and I'm on YouTube all the time. So I set it to 50, it gives me a little bit of extra vibrancy. Tint zero, I don't touch it. Advanced controls, everything is grayed out except gamma. I have at 1.9. I find that usually I'm between 1.9 and 2.2. If I'm viewing at night, sometimes I'll put it at 2.2 as that gives you slightly darker blacks and better contrast. But during the day, 
in an effort to have better visibility, if there's a lot of ambient lighting like today, I'll set it to 1.9. That brightens up the screen just a little bit. That makes things a little bit easier to see. But again, you experiment with it. You see what works best for you. White balance, I have to warm three. This is a departure from what I normally set it at. The most accurate setting is warm two, if you're going for accuracy. If you want a slightly cooler picture, then you go medium or cool, obviously. But because I use my LG C10 as my monitor, because I sit, you know, three or so feet away from the thing and I use it predominantly at night, I want to make sure that I'm not blasting my face, my eyes, my brain with that really bright blue light. And OLEDs tend to be very, very blue by nature. So I try to offset this by having warm two or warm three. When I'm using pretty much just the PC for productivity, for again, web browsing, viewing YouTube, emails, things like that, I keep it at warm three. The warm colors are much easier on your eyes and they're much more likely to prevent you from having headaches. They're much more likely to prevent you from having issues with sleep. The blue light will give you headaches. It will give you sleep issues. It will mess up your circadian rhythms. Uh, if I'm playing a game, then I stick to warm two as that is the slightly more accurate setting. But again, you do you, you see what works best for you. Color management, peak brightness are all grayed out. And then last but not least, we come to picture options. Again, everything is grayed out except for black level, which again is like we talked about, the dynamic range. If you want a full dynamic range, which is what you want, that's zero to 255 in SDR mode. So if we're going for that full dynamic range, then we wanna set our black level to high. Remember, we wanna make sure they're consistent. If you don't have them consistent, if they're mismatched, then that's when you have issues with your you know, image quality. So if you want to go, if your TV doesn't have, say for instance, your TV doesn't have the ability to switch black levels or to change dynamic range, then you can assume that your television only displays a limited dynamic range, which is 16 to 235. So in that respect, you'd wanna go back into the NVIDIA control panel, you'd wanna set your range to limited or partial, and then in your TV, you would just assume that it's, it's matched up correctly. Real cinema off, motion eye care is off, and true motion is off. I don't use any kind of motion processing, I don't use BFI or anything like that. I, I feel like the motion processing is good enough by default that you really don't need to add, you know, anything like, uh, OLED Motion Pro, whether it's low, medium, or high BFI. Look what happens when you add BFI. Screen gets a little bit dimmer, screen gets even more dim, and then on high, the screen is quite dim. I mean, if you're viewing in a nighttime environment, it's probably okay to use OLED Motion Pro, but you're just browsing the web, you're just doing basic productivity, you're, you're opening some programs, closing some programs, you're cleaning out your computer, email, things like that. You don't need black frame insertion for that. You're not worried about having smooth motion and enhanced motion resolution. So I just leave that off. And of course, by adding OLED Motion Pro, you're adding some picture processing, you're putting that black frame in between regular frames, and that is going to dim your screen, that is going to add latency. So in my opinion, it's best left off, especially for games. It'll make games too dark on the PC and it'll add a little bit of perceptible flicker and it'll add a little bit of latency. So to me, no thanks. <laughs> okay, so you might be wondering, one last thing that we'll end this video on. If you're looking at my advanced controls, you're saying, okay, steady, why is your dynamic contrast grayed out? Your super resolution, color gamut, all these other options are all grayed out, you can't change them. That's weird, right? Picture options, grayed out, grayed out, grayed out, grayed out. That's strange. Why is that the case? Don't you want control over these picture options? Now, the reason why a lot of these picture settings are grayed out is because I have my TV set to what's called PC mode, which I'm sure at this point you've probably heard of. There's been a lot of videos made about this. But to get to PC mode, what, what you want to do is hit the home button on your LG C10 remote, go to the home dashboard, and you go up to this gear, you hit edit. So my PC is hooked up to my television via HDMI input one. So you see here I have it set to PC mode. Now you can set it to PC mode by clicking on this icon, scrolling down and selecting PC mode. Now, the, the reason why you want your television to be in PC mode when you're using a personal computer that is sending full chroma information, otherwise known as RGB or 444, is because PC mode allows your TV to display said full color information in RGB or 444. If you're not in PC mode, what that basically means is your PC will by default render chroma in subsampling 422. So you're not getting full color information. And what can happen is when you 
you know, go on a message board or you go on Discord and you read full colored text on a full colored background, then the text won't look right. It'll be somewhat illegible. It might look a little bit blotchy, hard to understand, hard to see and discern. When your PC is putting out Chroma 444 and you put your TV in PC mode, it allows that text to be displayed with full color information in 444 or RGB, and that makes your text very clear, very legible, very, very easy to see, and that is what you want. And that's pretty much gonna do it for these picture settings. We've seen my settings for the NVIDIA control panel. We've seen my settings for the LG C10 itself. Uh, thankfully now with the advent of HDMI 2.1, we have no limitations. We can run at 4K, 120 Hertz with, as we've talked about, full color at RGB or 444 with HDR10 and with a full dynamic range or full black level. There are no limitations. And it's, it really does allow you to use your LG C10 to its complete and utter maximum potential, which is just a glorious thing. So anyway, guys, hopefully you have found this video informative in some way, shape, or form. If you have, please smash that like button. Please leave a comment down below letting me know. And if you can, please subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a lot. So thank you so much for spending, what, 20, 25 minutes with me. I really appreciate it. And we will see you guys next time with more LGC10 content. Peace.